Hello and welcome to another episode. My car, the name is Elbira, my EV6, is two years old, or just over. I got her on the 18th of November 2021, and we're just at the start of December now, 2023. So this is what has happened in two years, and things that have gone wrong, things that have gone right, how many miles I've done, a rough calculation of the state of health and the traction battery and a few other things. My, odom my odometer currently reads 10,922 miles so um, I haven't done that many miles in, in the two years because I'm retired and we've also got another electric car so we share the drive in between the two. I tend to keep the EV6 for long distance and the Renault Zoe for just pottering around locally. As a few of you may know I had quite a few problems with mine. Um, whether mine was born on a Friday afternoon when they'd basically had enough or because it was built during the pandemic and there were part shortages and other challenges I don't know but um, mine is not that typical of, of the amount of times it's been in. My car's actually been in 24 times to the dealer for various things and it's been off the road in that time for 53.5 days and it spent 200 days waiting for spare parts because there's been a spare parts shortage because of the pandemic. But I think that's more or less sorted now. The last thing I had came through really quick, but I'll come to that in a minute. Of all of those times that I went in, 48% of those times were for diagnosis problems. 32% of those times for hardware replacement. 30% of those times were for ECU software upgrades to fix various problems, issues and recalls. And 7% of those times were for service. So I'll just go through each visit. Uh, I'm there. This gives people an idea of um, things you might have to get fixed. But I mean, most of these fixes should be in the new cars if you get them. But if it's a 2020, 2021 car like mine, then... If you've not had these updates, then you probably need them. The first update I got at the dealer was um, ABS traction control update to fix juddering at six miles an hour. And the first uh, climate control update, that was some attempt to get the remote climate control working. The next one was in February 22. There's more um, climate control testing and investigation uh, to see if it needed the inverter changed for the um, HVAC. At that time they said no. Uh, 28th of fair bit was 22, it was in for a remote uh, climate control fix, which didn't fix the climate control. Uh, the 1st of April 22, it was in for a software update to help cure zombie mode. 20, 25th of April 22, they replaced the ultrasonic intrusion detector sensor and they fixed the floor wire to avoid interference with the amplifier. They also applied um, the DATC upgrade to fix the climate control, that's the remote climate control. 17th of May 22 they decided that it was within the recall remit for the climate controlled inverter swap so that was done. 26th of July 22 it was booked in because the Meridian amplifier had failed uh, they claim they had some in stock and uh, it was put back in for the first of the 822 to have the Meridian amplifier replaced. But when it got there, they found that the stock had been taken away and they couldn't get access to it. So that journey was a wasted trip. Ninth for the 822 is booked in for the rollaway risk recall. That was actually the proper recall of, that appeared on the government's recall list. 10th for the 10th 22. It, it, it actually was booked in for the Meridian amplifier replacement. We waited 76 days for that. Um, but after the replacement, my active sound design stopped working. And this that problem went on for a whole year before they figured out what the heck it was. So first of the LM22 booked in for an um, investigation into active sound design wasn't working. Uh, 19 for the 12, there was a software update for the amplifier, which they applied. 26 of the first 23 is booked in for driver's door touchpad random silhouette lights staying on problem and that turned out to be the 
water ingress in the driver's door control unit. 12th of the 4th 23, booked in car with battery preconditioning update. That was after much badgering and persuading, and they also did the driver's door control unit replacement, which that was related to the that was related to the silhouette light problem. Um, shortly after that, I started getting the 12 volt battery problems. So 19th of the 5th, was booked in for a day for 12 volt battery diagno diagnosis and door antenna inspection. 24th of the 5th, is booked in for overnight stay from 4 p.m. overnight for the, for the 12 volt battery test, and then they agreed to order a 12 volt battery. So the car stayed with them overnight and they ordered the 12 volt battery for overnight delivery. So I got my car back on the 26th of the 5th with a new 12 volt battery under warranty. On the 25th of June 2023, the driver's display cluster failed and I was stuck waiting for spare parts for three weeks. So they gave me an E-Nero four trim, which I made a few videos about. So that was nice to have, but you know, my car was gone for three weeks. Ninth for the Act 23, replacement cluster display fitted and car returned after 34 days. They also carried out the eye pedal improvement enhancement and the driver's door antenna replacement. 7th of the 8th, 2023, booked in the car for missing active sound design investigation again. We've done many of these, but I kept on at them. But I, but I left it for a bit because it wasn't that important. Um, eventually, I had to write to the CEO of Kia to get them to get it sorted because Acorn, my dealer, was saying that the technical, Kia's technical guys were saying it, it was a, a problem that was taken away in software with a head unit update, which was complete nonsense. So my letter to the CEO finally got it sorted. Somebody high up in the technical said, no, it's got an active sound design module. Please check it. So the 6th of September 23, it was booked in for a day to test swap out active sound design module. That's when they found the loose connection. It wasn't, it wasn't connected. So it was fixed after nearly a year. Um, that same visit, they also installed the ICCU software update. 13th the 11th 23 was my first service at 20,000 miles or two years, but you know, I'd only done 10,000 10, miles at the time. Then at the same time they did the service, I got them to inspect the headlights and they applied for a warranty replacement for the headlights and I got that and those were installed on the 22nd to the 11th 2023. So both headlights were changed. And that was down to degradation. So what about battery degradation? car scanner still reports 100% state of health, but top and bottom buffers hide the true state of health. So you have to go and do something else to try and figure out what the true state of health is. The full gross battery capacity is 77.4 kilowatt hours or 77 for 400 watt hours. With buffers taken off, that's uh, 3.4 kilowatt hours is taken off, which is about 4.4%. The net capacity is around 74 kilowatt hours or 74,000 watt hours. Uh, the problem is it's difficult to measure by using total stored energy in car scanner because the ambient temperature of battery changes how much energy is stored. So for example, I have one reading from October when it was warmer and one from this week when it was sub-zero and quite cold. So in October, the total energy stored was 73,110 at 12 degrees Celsius, and some of the first total energy stored was 72,606 at 5 degrees Celsius. No doubt in the summer, when it's really warm, you know, 15, 20 Celsius, it's going to be a lot more. But I, I don't have that recorded, I wish I did. So the average of the two is 72,858, so expressed as a percentage of 74,000 watt hours. That works out at 98.4% state of health. But remember, it hides this, so you won't actually see it till it's eaten into the buffers and eaten the buffers away. So the car won't show it in its state of health figure until that happens, I don't think. And that actually ties up with my wife's 2018 Renault Zoe. When we bought that in 2020 second hand, it was 98% state of health at two years old. And for reference, I've taken readings over the last three and a half years, we've had the Zoe. So in July 21, it was still 98. Um, August 22, it was 96. And this week, it was 94. So it's losing about 2% a year, state of health. Battery work time was 3115 hours. 
and that would also include the vehicle to load use, which I've also used quite a lot of. But there is no counters I can find in plastic scanners to tell me how much I've used of that. Number of quick charges was 12. There were seven DC charges. They must be slow DC charges, not fast charges. And the number of standard AC charges was 1591. Um, because most of that was done at home on my Zappi charger, solar power, it's all the stops and starts, otherwise it would be a lot lower. So that is all the data. So what do I think of the car after two years? After, despite all the problems, I mean, it's not an issue for me because I'm, I'm retired. I don't rely on it for work. I've got the wife's car. Um, if I was working, it would be a big issue. But it's not. Um, I still love the car to bits. It's still the best car I've ever had. And I just don't want to get rid of it. I'll keep it as long as I can. As for reliability of other EV6s, um, Gary's survey that I, I covered a few weeks ago in a news episode shows that the, the failure rates are, are pretty damn low in the worldwide population. So my car is really the exception. So I'm still going to recommend the EV6. Um, I, if you're going to buy one, I'd buy it before the facelifted version comes out. I mean. Whilst they will update the internal electronics and give it a new head unit and probably full over the air updates. Um, if you like the look of this version, I'd get one now. Anyway, that's my two year review. Thank you for watching.